You're gonna have to start it for us then. All right. You should see the notes Killer B has. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. We could we could sell this, you know. I yeah. Pretty, there's enough people here. Someone Auto will buy in on it. Autograph it. Yeah, of course. That sound is the sound of the game launching. Take it away. We are in the game. This is a best of one elimination set or game between Tato. Tato is. Oh, thank you very much, Killer B. Tato is in the blue, playing as the Ethiopians. In the red, we have MBL. MBL is playing as the Celts. This is on Arabia. With me is Killer B. Killer B, take it away. T90, thanks for having me with you, man. This is great. And um, just quickly looking at Tato's map in the blue, playing as Ethiopians. He's got backstone, back gold, backstone, and a back wood line. It's a little bit of an odd looking Arabia map generation since he has a wood line kind of in front of some of those resources. Uh, but I think this map is okay for him. Both players do have a restart, so keep that in mind. What are you seeing on MBL side of the map? Uh, MBL side, I didn't really get to take a look at. I really don't like this map. And MBL actually asked me before this, he said, do we get a re in a best of one? Probably should say yes. You do get a re in a best of one elimination series here. I, I don't like it because he only has one real option for wood. And going out to the right side is doable, but it's a bit too far. And there's many hills on the front, and Ethiopians have those faster firing archers, so Tetsu's probably a little bit more inclined to go for the archers. So on this hill, it's not going to be easy for MBL to take fights. And that gold is also on the left side quite exposed. I don't like the map for MBL. So people just tuning in, watching at home, I want to remind you that you get four minutes to call a restart. So we're two minutes into the game. These guys can call re. Uh, they still have a little more time. And it's probably wise to go and scout your opponent a little bit before you call re, even if you're planning to. MBL was actually sitting out. So he got to hear that piece of advice that Nilly gave uh, in Leary's situation. I, I wouldn't be surprised if MBL does call a re here, honestly. I hate to make this prediction before it happens, but... At least the way he was going, it looked like he was looking for Leary's base, or sorry, for Tato's base. And the reason being is sometimes you send three to wood, four to wood, and you have a specific strat in mind with this if you chose. If MBL is able to find that before he calls three, if he does, then he's able to get a tell on what Tato might prefer. But we're at three minutes and 15 seconds now. Uh, he did get close to Tato's base. He got one hit on that scout. And I think, I think it will continue acting as if that's not going to be called. Because well, it, it's four vills on wood for each player, so we could see a drush out of either guy. They'll have the wood if they want to build a barracks. MBL was forward early with his scout, but he wasn't able to lay many sheep. Tato was playing defensively, so he guarded his boar. So Tato's got all his resources. Three minutes and 55 seconds, so we'll see if a rematch happens right now. And it I, looks like both guys are going to play through this one. Uh, now that we know they're going to play through the match, I have to say, I think Tato's got a nice advantage with his map. I, I think he does. And I kind of forgot, I don't know how I forgot, but MBL probably ran forward more for the laming. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what, really what he's known for. He sees his boar here. So he could try and go for that. He chose not to lame. He may instead choose to block a villager. And uh, technically laming the boar would kill the villager then. We'll, we'll see. He's continuing to scout. He does have all of his resources at home. Uh, four on wood for Celts is pretty much standard. You're either going man at arms or you're going drush into crossbows. Celts are pretty strong when it comes to the castle age. And while the Ethiopians for Tato have the faster firing archers, MBL has the faster firing siege. So that's an interesting thing to think about. I think the early game will be important. Absolutely, it sets up to be an interesting match. Uh, like you said, the uh, faster Siege will counter the faster Archers. The free Pike and Halb upgrade for Tato will be difficult if MBL does build a couple of Knights. Uh, but I think what we are going to see is some early aggression here. Uh, we are watching MBL scout kind of waiting in the wings to see if he can maybe pick off the Villager yeah. coming out to the gold. He's not going to lame the boar, I don't think. He's waiting for the gold miner, I believe. Uh, I think he's going to be too late. If that was his plan, yeah, yeah, it was his plan, that's... That's not great from MBL. He should have sat a little bit closer, just sat on the line of sight of the villager. He was thinking about running in to kill this villager, but I don't know. His scout was inactive. I figured he was going to do that. Was well, not close enough, so he got his, he has a scout forward, got some scouting information on the gold and whatnot, but I think a little bit unfortunate and silly decision from MBL to wait there and not be close enough to stop that. But I think we will see a drush from MBL now, Killer B. He's, he's going over to that gold. Both players scouting around the map, circling around behind their opponent's DCs, figuring out where all those resource piles are, getting ready for the late game. 
I think Tato scouted his side of the map really nicely. He knows how he's going to be able to wall and defend it. Uh, and we're seeing actually MBL taking a little bit of TC arrow fire here as he uh, goes on a tangential uh, uh, way across. He's also going to find the barracks of Tato. Yeah, well, I'm going to guess man in arms here for Tato because I talked about it before the game started. You get 100 food, 100 gold when you hit the Feudal Age in Tatis' position with his civilization. So if he's not going Drush, and he still may be undecided, depending on what MBL is going to do. If he's not going Drush, all he needs to do is collect 10 gold. That'll take him to 110. No math on stream, but I'm trying. Uh, three. <laughs> wait, no, he doesn't need to collect 10 gold. <laughs> doesn't need to collect 10 gold at all. That was really bad. So you can make three militia and then you can upgrade to man-at-arms, no problem. Normally you have to send two to gold, so. Well, on the other side of the map, MBL is going to drush. And for people joining us for the first time, that means a Dark Age rush. He's going to build three militia and go forward and try to pressure Tato's economy. Tato is going to go and build those militia a little later, most likely, we think. Uh, and then maybe upgrade those units and try to take a fight in a defensive position with a better military unit. I like what Tato's done here. He just now scouted the barracks. But he already had started walling his woodline. He knew that if MBL did rush, then he'd be in a poor position. So well, I actually think Tato's going to be planning on archers here. Uh, but anyway, it was smart of him to make these walls just by feel. J just guessing. Uh, better safe than sorry. And he will be completely safe except for maybe some of the villagers on the barriers be disrupted. Yeah, at the moment, I'm watching MBL building this kind of strange-looking bit of walling. He's building a, just a little bit of bubble of safety back at home. In theory, that will protect his gold, his stone, and his wood line. But none of these resources are really safe against archers, especially once we get a few upgrades on them. So it's, it's going to be a precarious position for MBL. He's going to have a lot of trouble defending this. Uh, he might be able to defend it by being the aggressor in the match. It depends on what he wants to do. So the Dark Age Rush, you can either go Drush and then click up at 26, 27 villagers yep. and go for maybe right into archers. Or in this situation, you can do what I think MBL is doing and go Drush into FC. And FC is fast castle, which means he's going to hit feudal, then he's going to click castle. It, it's a struggle, though, because the archers can range his gold. So though the Drush will buy him a little bit of time, Tato is safe at home with these walls. And it's going to be rough to be able to implement that strategy. If it works out, though, it, it normally is very effective because you'll have those upgraded units, but Tato's going for two archery ranges on the front, and he is going archers. I just realized MBL made a fourth militia, which will slow down his time a little bit. But yeah, Tato's going to be the aggressor. Yeah, MBL is uh, going to be basically walled out of doing any real damage to Tato's eco, so kudos to Tato so far for uh, keeping himself safe. His ranges are up. He will soon be able to take these militia down. MBL maybe will dive in and take a risk, but I, I just can't foresee it. He's really walled out of doing any damage to Tato's eco. Yeah, and Tato probably is recognizing that there's going to be an FC behind this because of the Dark Age next to MBL's name. So what's he going to do? He's going to send three forward villagers. The archers will be following. Now, at this point, MBL can't do anything against this. He has no form of military. He can't build a defensive tower. Tato could be ballsy enough to build the tower right next to the Palisade wall, or he could go for a sneaky tower that MBL cannot see right on that main goal. And what I like about Tato's defense is he's, he's walled MBL's drush out, so he's not worried about it. And he's going to send his archers forward now and see if he can start to harass him, and he is going to tower up that front gold. Going to take over a little hill there next to that gold pile. That will really hurt MBL. And those archers can do damage on this wood line. They can do damage on the gold. They can harass from a lot of angles. And uh, MBL is going to have his hands really full with this map. Uh, he is. And with how late he's up, he's floating a lot of wood. He's not planning on going fast castle. There's no way he will have the food for that. So he's just lost his gold. And Tato is just going to use the villagers to batter his way in here. Uh, MBL is going to need two ranges. He's going to need to go skirmishers. But, you know, it takes a lot of time, and he's lost a lot of map control. Smart thing to go to the stone for defensive towers. But this is looking very good for Tato. Yeah, Tato here is in an absolutely commanding position. He's, he's been the aggressor all game. He has scouted that stone on the right side of MBL's map, and he has a pretty good idea of what MBL's base looks like. If you look at the Fog of War, Tato knows where to hit next, and I think although he's pushing in on the left side, he will probably carve a few archers off to hit the right side as well. MBL's in a lot of trouble. He needs some more units. Uh, Castle Age alone is not going to get him out of this problem. Yeah, I think MBL 
this is an interesting position. He needs to protect his wood. He really can't do that with this tower because the archers can still go around and sit behind that wood. That's his only wood. He's going to ranges now with tower defense, which he will be planning on doing. He will have enough stone for another tower shortly. He can defend his base quite easily because everything's pretty compact. MBL diving in now to Tato's wood line, trying to get in. He uh, ran past the town center for a moment, but nice quick walling from Tato is going to push MBL back. And those men at arms continue to strike out early on in this game. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's really good awareness from Tato, who's on the front building towers and sending his archers around the other side. So he had to focus, he had to know that MBL would be trying that. And that was what MBL needed. He needed a counter. He doesn't want to be defending at home. He wanted to do some damage. He's unable to do that. And uh, MBL forced to build a tower on his wood line now. Though Tato's tower will go up and that'll be a pain in the butt. Yeah, at the moment I'm watching Tato circling around to the right side of MBL's base. He's gonna find a stray villager over there, but I think eventually he will head toward the stone and harass. MBL has engaged in the tower war. That's the only way for him to get back into this match. Going fast castle at this point would have been suicide. Uh, so MBL clinging on here, but he's, he's behind. That's, that's uh, for sure. Yeah, he, he's definitely behind. Uh, now Tato, he's in a beautiful position here with these two villagers. He's gonna lose his tower. He's idling MBL's economy. Tato could build a tower right up against the edge of the map and delay the wood again. And, and you can tell, MBL is struggling. His economy, he is idle. He does not have many defensive units. But really, in this situation, Tato, he could stop building forward towers and he could just tower defense at home, build up his eco, and try and get to Castle Age. Yeah, Tato's in a very good spot. He does now have Fletching in. Plus one damage on those archers will make them even tougher. Still two villagers for Tato hanging in the south, and he is going to build that cheeky tower you were just speculating about. Yeah. He's going to drop a tower right on the bottom of the map, and MBL's wood line, which is already clustered, is going to get... It's going to go from bad to worse here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what does MBL do against this? Again, I feel like this map was going to be such... It's going to be so difficult for him, because he loses the gold, he basically loses the wood soon after. And because of that, he's, he's trying to wall, and he's trying to go to the other wood line, which, again, could be ranged by archers, again, could be hit by towers. His man-at-arms are useless, just hanging out, taking a breather, and is looking very good for Tato here. This would be a great resolve for him. No one wants to go home. No one wants to sit in the sidelines. And as soon as he kills the one tower, the, the next one goes up. Oh, uh, it's rough. Just, just an endless tower aggression on that left side. MBL has expanded his economy out to the right. He's starting to wall in the right side of his base. Uh, I think it's a smart move. I, I wonder if it's too little too late, but he's going to give it a shot here uh, because, you know, this is the all-important elimination game. Loser of this game will go home with $600, but they will be the fourth place uh, finisher. Yep. Nobody wants to be and fourth. Nobody wants, no one wants to be last. And uh, it's looking pretty bad for MBL at the moment. Uh, still, he can't take wood here. He's chopping a couple trees. It's so bad. And Tato, he's done this before in other games, I believe. It might have been a different escape tournament, but he played versus Doubt, and he utilized the faster-firing archers. His micro was insane, and he's having fun with this now. This is where it's really fun to have archers like this. Uh, he's killed a couple villagers. More importantly, he's denied that wood, I think. MBL has no space. He's completely smothered. Oh, it's ugly. It is it, very ugly. It's a really tough position for MBL. Continuously raided on the right side, towered up on the left side. He's going to need an absolute Hail Mary of a play if he's going to get back in this game. But hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. Maybe we'll see him do something a little bit crazy. For now, it's skirmishers with plus one damage, soon to be plus one defense. Maybe he can do a little bit to push this back, uh, but it's looking absolutely dire. It's yeah, dire for yeah MBL. it's going to be rough. I think Tato would have to make some mistakes. If Tato ran in and tried to micro down a skirmisher army that was too much for him, then maybe that helped MBL. Like here, he can he can think about microing that down, but he's going back. He's playing it safe because he knows. I mean, this is his point of view. This is what a great player does. That they see the map. This side, I need to deny again. This side, I could probably get another tower or run in with archers. He knows everything, and I honestly now he can just defend it with towers at home. He's on the stone already. Yeah, Tato does seem to be retreating back home with his main army. 500 food in the bank for Tato, 140 gold. He's creeping up to what he needs to go to Castle Age. MBL on the other side, 50 food, 30 gold. Not going to be in Castle Age anytime soon. So, yeah. you know, Tato's ahead and time is on his side now. He just has to keep this army alive. Yeah, and he, oh, I'm not sure if he's running around. He might be tempted to go to the wood line. 
and that's why he's running this direction, and it would, wouldn't be a bad move. Uh, MBL's actually found him. He's going to kill a couple archers. Now, I heard the stable from Tad, so I don't want to look away from this fight. He could be tempted to make some feudal scouts, which would be great against the skirmishers, or he could just wait for the castle age. And uh, it looks yeah, like... for now, it is scouts on the way for yeah. Tato. So he's going to try to keep the pressure on here. It's a little surprising to me, uh, but that's what he's decided to do. Tato with 400 food, 250 gold. So he will click up somewhat soon, but spending a lot of food on those scouts. For now, Tato in full retreat. MBL on the chase. MBL on the other side of the map seems to continue to queue skirmishers for now. Yeah, MBL is going to try and trap, which I like. But now Tato has a scout here. And one scout might not seem like too much, but it really is against skirmishers. Tato starting this engagement off well, I think, killing two skirmishers, only losing one archer. He needs to get his scout here. Also, Tato's building that tower on the front, and it's in range of more wood villagers. So, MBL is struggling. That lumber camp on the right-hand side, completely useless. Two idols there. He is up against it here. I, to MBL's credit, he's gotten a great fight on the other side of the yeah. map. He's killed a ton of archers from Tato. He's really slowed that army down. The scouts are going to be in here. They're going to eventually chop through these skirms, but essentially we saw Tato lose something like a dozen archers there, which would be crossbows relatively soon in the Castle Age. I, I didn't think that would happen, but I, I kind of missed it. I looked away, but I believe MBL was, was baiting him a little bit to go towards his units, oh. and it worked out. And again, what I said earlier, I think Tato probably should have just ran with his advantage and not try to push forward too much. And that gives MBL an opportunity to come back into this game. MBL's gotten some kills. Even if he's still behind in the Castle Age, Tato will have less units to threaten him with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tato's still with a really nice advantage here, but uh, it does look like MBL will have a little bit going for him in the momentum column. A couple scouts roaming around for the blue player, not finding a whole lot to do. Uh, MBL pretty much on full skirms with a couple of spearmen here and there, a couple of towers here and there. Market is coming up for MBL. At the moment, uh, Tato is nearly on 800 food. He has plenty of gold to click up. MBL's not far either. 500 food, only 50 gold, but I think he'll be up relatively soon. Well, I'm trying to think here. Tato's just clicked up. MBL skirmishers are not going to mean much against Ethiopian crossbows with extra upgrades because Tato will micro them. So I think that towers are very important for MBL. He has towers on this wood, but that's not enough. He's going to the other wood. One tower will not be enough, especially there because your villagers have to run towards the enemy units to get there. So I think he needs to build some towers with his extra stone. Did he just place a tower or did he... I believe he sold his stone. I thought he had 300 a moment ago. So hopefully for him, he can secure this because we know where Tato's going. Look on the right-hand side of the map. Yeah, MBL will get a tower down on that very weak side of the map that you were ah. talking about. He just got enough stone to do it. And it could keep him afloat. He's been on the ropes all game. He's been taking a lot of body blows, uh, but he's still here. He's still fighting. So we'll see if he can get back in this game. Castle Age will be in earlier for Tato. MBL won't be that far behind. We see scale barding coming for Tato as well. So those skirmishers are going to be really uh, not very effective here in just a few minutes. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I think MBL, I mean, this has been rough. This has been rough. But if you look at the Vil count, of course, it doesn't account for idle time. And you look at the Castle Age upgrade, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that fight against Tato's archers was so huge. And, you know, we probably didn't weren't as excited about it because we knew it was bad for MBL. But this is a very close game. Tatsu's just waiting for those upgrades. And he will meet a tower on the right, a tower on the left. And with that tower on the left, he'll meet Skirmisher. So MBL might have the time even going for scale barding himself. Uh, I... Yeah, there's a stable. Okay, he is building a stable. Castle Age is in for the blue player Tato. Back at home, we will see him... Queuing, crossbowmen, a knight, and some more archers coming forward. He'll also grab Bodkin Arrow, which will give him an additional damage and an additional range. And those units will come forward, and they're going to be really difficult for MBL to deal with uh, because MBL's not in the Castle Age yet. He won't have Bodkin Arrow. Uh, uh, those archers will roam to this wood line. They could do some damage. Yeah, and the two-pronged attack is what MBL can't deal with right now. He has the right-hand side locked down, but now Tats is sending some more to the left. So... And this is very good position for Tato. MBL is Kelt, so he could go for the Maganels. However, I think resources are a little bit stretched for him after researching Lead Skirmisher, which will also be very good, but he must not have realized that there was a stable from Tato, or maybe hoping there's not a stable from Tato. 
Tato did show his hand a little bit with the scout upgrades, but there will be knights. Tato is that. sticking with one TC. He stonewalled himself in back at home. Siege Workshop up in the middle of the map. He's ready to come in like a wrecking ball and try to finish this game off right here, right now. Oh, man. <laughs> Only people here will get that. <laughs> but that was, that was really good. I don't know if I could top that one. Uh, but skirmishers are on the right. There's a forward Siege Workshop for Tato. I just love how aggressive these players have been playing. Luckily, MBL has a gold in the back. He needs a fight, man. He needs a fight. Because you can't give up map control like this. Tato is stonewalled at home. He's completely safe. This is a beautiful base for him. So we'll see what happens. And there will be a hill for Tato. Double stables coming for MBL. He's going to need something good to happen now. He cannot afford to go with another town center at this point. Uh, and Tato could do that if he wanted, but I think it's the right choice to keep the pedal to the metal. Tato moving across the map on top of that hill has a good number of crossbows, has a couple of knights. These skirmishers from MBL right now are really hard countered by the group of knights here in this Mangonel. Yeah, MBL, it looked like he was going to try and converge on the crossbows, and then he saw the knights, and then he saw the Mangonel. And it was a really bad thing for him to find. He has, uh, he'll have five knights here in a second. He has that one tower, but these are Ethiopian crossbows, so they attack much faster. So they're that much better against knights and skirms. Here we go, guys. Those of you guys watching here live, this is the moment. Tato on top of the hill, bringing that army together, pulling in the reins. MBL really cannot afford to lose any more ground. If he loses this tower and he loses this army, it's gonna be really bad. That being said, MBL Double Stables is queuing up more and more knights. He wants to push this back in one fell swoop. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say it's all down to this Maganel. I think if Tato loses this Maganel, he may be tempted to push back for an, an extra minute, but that Maganel really paying for itself there. MBL is fighting uphill at his own base, waiting for more knights, I assume. But with that Maganel, the skirmishers mean very little. At the moment, MBL with 200 gold in the bank has about 1k or 1.2k gold left on his gold pile. His main gold was taken over early, so he's kind of going to be starved for gold. Tato has time to make this push. As long as he clings to this hill, I think he's in a winning position. Yeah, I think he is as well. He has more vills, so this is where MBL needs to take a fight. Now, MBL needs to make sure the Maganel's out of position, and now he's going to go for it. And the Maganel's slightly out of position, getting a good shot, though. I think the Maganel will go down, but... If the knights are blocked off, the crossbows are going to kill so many knights in the process. And there's the micro from Tato. He's going to kill these knights so fast. So a small fight. Tato actually has some units on Stan Brown, like not attacking. But uh, good engagement for him. And so many crossbows from Tato. That's been the theme, I think, today, uh, going with a lot of ranged units. MBL accomplished the mission of killing that Mangano, but he did it at a pretty great price. Lost a lot of knights. Tato's army will retreat. It's still very large. Lots of crossbows hanging out there. Getting to a really big death ball of crossbows is going to be a great thing for Tato with that Ethiopian faster firing speed. Uh, he's going to continue to roam around the map with those, see if he can poke and prod at MBL. This wood line is not quite thick enough to be protected fully, uh, but for now, MBL clings to life. That's been the story all game long. We are 35 minutes in, and MBL is still clinging to life. And if he can bring this one back, it's going to be one heck of a story. Yeah, I think the Siege Workshop is what can change this game. Uh, a couple Maganel shots can change any game. And obviously, heavy on crossbows for Tato. Uh, Tato's on two TCs right now, and he's probably in the position where he can go for a third. And he's also getting ballistics. So I love how he's getting all the upgrades. He's going to have thumb ring and ballistics. Uh, he's just keeping his map control. He could have easily gone for extra economy and lost this push. So I like this move from Tato. MBL needs a response, though, because he does not have a second TC, and he does not have his main goal, so he needs to have time to address these issues. Absolutely. Hanging on by a thread at the moment. Ballistics will be huge for Tato. He continues to come forward. He continues to cling to that hill. Hill generation near your base like this can really be a double-edged sword. It can really hurt you. Oh, Mangano pops out. Nice flip from Tato for now. Uh, Manganel taking a ton of arrow fire, one decent Manganel shot there for MBL, but I think he needed to do more with that. Uh, yeah, it was so unfortunate. I'm pretty sure he missed the Manganel. He's going to kill it now, but I felt like he could have killed that with the first shot and gotten another shot onto the crossbows. And not to be, I guess, but he's pushed Tato away again. But honestly, at this point, Tato knows if I hold my advantage, I keep my military number up, don't lose any big fights. He doesn't have his main gold. And this other gold right here is, is right beneath this fight. So 
I wonder if Tato scouted this second gold. MBL's gonna run out of this gold shortly, so regardless of if it was scouted, Tato's in a good position if he holds here. Absolutely, Tato waiting for that gold to run out for MBL. About 500 left, MBL's gonna climb the hill with his knights and he's gonna go in and push against these crossbows. Both players utilizing knights versus their opponent. Uh, Skirmisher's getting cleaned up pretty quick. MBL is gonna get a decent fight all in all. He'll lose all of his skirms, but at this point in the game, I think that's okay. I think that's a pretty good fight for MBL. He wins back his hill and he wins back the opportunity to put a TC down on this gold pile. <laughs> yeah, that's I essential. mean, perfect timing. And that the fight really was perfect. Tato was out of position for a second. MBL had a perfect grouping of his units. And has to be careful because there's the Maganel here. But it was a good fight for MBL, but he still has to continue on here. Kill as many crossbows as possible. And a nice attack round there from Tato on the remaining units. That's what you like to see. And still 75 bills for Tato, 56 for MBL. So I think, in my opinion, he has to continue here and be aggressive. Building a second siege workshop. I don't know if he has the economy for that, but it's better position on the hill. Yeah, MBL is continuing to be aggressive here. I would have liked to see him protect this gold to the side, but he doesn't have the wood for it, and honestly, he can't protect it against this hill unless he has the bigger military. Right now, military numbers are 24 for Tato, 13 for MBL. Manganel coming back in, we could see another decent shot, uh, but it looks like Tato will probably lose that one for quite cheap. Yeah, I, I just, I'm looking at MBL's resources and he's so stretched. And the second siege workshop was such an expense for him. He can't build a mining camp on his gold. He has to wait till he gets the wood there. He had to build a Maganel or two. So because he's so stretched, Tato, you look at his resources, he's floating resources and he has plenty of military. And that was very, very close. He needs to be careful here. This could still be bad for him. Beautiful display of micro. Very nice split, absolutely. And I'm also watching Tato's stone count. He's up to 500 stone. If he can win back that hill and castle that hill on MBL's side, the game is over. I mean, uh, MBL must continue to outproduce these uh, precious knights and see if he can continue to push his opponent away. Here comes that town center, though, for MBL on that extra gold pile. Just at the moment his previous gold runs out, uh, a lifeline gets thrown to the red player, and he's, he's still alive. Yeah, he's still alive. He, he is, and again, I think Tato... MBL can win this game, but I think Tato can lose it more. Absolutely. I think it's more likely because Tato has a good advantage. He will have the stone for a castle. He builds it in front of his TC on this gold, and he secures two golds. And he needs to upgrade these units. I love the fact he has the monks because he's going to go for a couple night upgrades. Or, or sorry, converts. But actually, this could be big. He just, yeah, he just got a conversion on a knight and killed a Maganel. He's going to go in for the other Maganels. I don't think it's going to be successful. But regardless, I, I mean, Tato just needs to keep his crossbows alive, Tyler. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, Tato here is doing a pretty good job. And like you said, it's Tato's game to win, I think, at this point. MBL still battling through it. You've got to give him some real credit here. Uh, he's going to hang to that hill. He's going to hold on to the map, the part of the map that matters most. If he gets starved of gold, the game is over. Resources in the bank right now, 250 food for MBL, 250 gold. Tato has 700 food, 500 gold, and he's got about to drop a castle yeah, somewhere. I, I mean, uh, I see it on this hill. It's kind of risky. If he wouldn't have been able to kill those Maganels, then it could have been bad for him. It could have been one of those situations where a player loses their whole army and the castle gets denied. But this is a much better castle just because of the hill. Uh, his army will be much safer there. And he's making his own Maganels, which is the wise thing to do. MBL's going to get here at the wrong time. Tetsu has clicked up to the Imperial Age. Uh, MBL's tempted to go in here. There's a one for one. Tetsu losing that other one on low HP. But yeah, there's the castle. And with the imp upgrade, it's going to be so difficult for MBL. MBL's in a really rough spot. If he wants to try to go do some raiding, he can go for it with the Knights, but remember, Tato stonewalled up earlier on in the game, so it's not gonna be easy to get inside Tato's base. Uh, the blue player here, playing from a lead all game long, has defended himself well, he has the better economy, and he just has to wait for Imperial Age to come in, and he should be able to steamroll MBL. Uh, I think at this point, MBL assumes he clicked up, because Tato's not taking any fights. Tato's pretty defensive. He has a castle at home where MBL can't do damage. So MBL immediately going to the right-hand side to try and do damage here. I don't think he knows that there are stone walls back there. 
MBL needs a big Mangonel shot. He's in range almost. We'll see if he can get one here. Yeah, the only way back. <laughs> yeah. Tato is having fun now. It's so many crossbows. They're Ethiopian crossbows. <laughs> Denying a siege workshop with crossbows. And yeah, I think we haven't seen a game like this yet today. But this has been pretty convincing. I feel like when the Imperial Age upgrade hits, assuming nothing crazy happens, MBL might call the GG. I hate to say that, but Tato has played this one perfectly. Absolutely. Tato basically uh, dealing body blows all game long, and MBL is obviously getting exhausted with it. Uh, his military is... It's still a pretty big military. He has to go all in castle. He has to do something now. Even though Tato's up to imp, uh, there is still a very small window that MBL still could get a big Mangonel shot and get back in this. Uh, but the window is really closing quickly. Yeah, Ethiopians get free Halb. He makes three or four barracks, starts making Halberdiers regardless of upgrades. Yep. Uh, he could do it with Arbless alone here, I think. But um, all he needs is some Halberdier, Arbless, and there's nothing MBL can do. That's a very hard comp to stop if you're on even terms. And you're definitely not on even terms as Tato's about to hit him. Yeah, and Tato is queuing up a couple of rams. He's got three siege workshops coming, uh, so he may be looking to put his stamp on this one in just a moment. Arbalest and Brace are coming for the blue player right away. Chemistry as well. That is going to be one beefy group of soon-to-be Arbalest. Tato expanding to the right side of the map, getting another town center down on a nice gold pile to the right. Uh, MBL's going to make his push in here, though, and this is a last-ditch effort to try to get back in this game. Uh, yeah, so... Are there any Maganels for MBL back at home? There's not. Tato, he would out micro them. Here, Tato's gonna have fun with this. He has plenty of Arbless, and because of the walls, MBL cannot even get in his base. So MBL really not doing much to the economy. Idling one TC, not killing any villagers, and then here's Tato's army. Uh, actually, a, a TC could go down to these Arbless if he wanted with the hill advantage and the Maganel. It wouldn't take too much. We saw this in the Dark Age, and we're seeing it again. Tato has lured MBL into an offensive position. He's defending with walls. He's not even fighting MBL's army in a big way. And he's back on the offensive, pushing on the front of MBL's base. MBL's town center, that pivotal town center that protects that most important gold on the map, is under pressure. Mangonel fire coming in from the hill. And I don't think MBL has an answer for this. I don't think he can keep that TC up. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You can make an argument that Tato shouldn't be sitting here. He's so far ahead now he can, but he could have ran right past the TC and killed all these villagers. So maybe in a, if the situation was different, Tato wouldn't be sitting here on the hill. But yeah, the TC is going to go down unless MBL uses these two Maganels, his knights, and his skirmishers, which again are cast Age units. And he, he's stuck in the cast Age because of the damage that was done earlier on. MBL is going to respond to this. He's got a Mangonel at the bottom of the hill. Could get a big shot in here. Tato not able to split this time. Does take quite a lot of damage. Another shot from the bottom of the hill for MBL. His Mangonel is still alive. He'll trade one for zero. So MBL with a chance here coming back. Uh, he's going to bring his Knights into this fight. They ha do have plus two defense. This is really his only last ditch effort chance. So MBL will take this fight. Surrounding these archers, he's going to do some damage, but I still think Tato's getting good value. Yeah, these, these units are going to get one shot at... There's the GG from MBL. Very well played. Very well played from Tato. The GG is in, and, and uh, the crowd, you can hear them out here having a good time. We're going uh, to see Tato go forward, but can I get a hand for MBL? Playing that one from behind, playing as hard as he could on that one. Nearly able to bring it back early on in the Castle Age. But in the end, it will be Tato moving on as the three seed, continuing in this tournament, seeing if he can uh, go home with the grand prize and the players shaking hands. Good job, guys. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about what Tato did to win that game. If you look at the map, there's the main gold, there's the wood line here. And Tato knew he needed to get to this area. If he denied this area, it'd be a very easy game for him. And that's ultimately what won him the game. Absolutely. Starved his opponent of resources. MBL's map, admittedly, was not as good. I thought we would see him call a re. Yeah, I uh, agree. But he went with it. He had a strategy. Just couldn't quite keep the boat floating. And in the end, we'll see Tato move on. Yep. Well, there's the statistics for you. Tato with more units killed. Uh, much more in the way of army, economy as well. Tato, not surprisingly, collecting more wood and gold, seeing as he went with Arbalest. Uh, Tato ahead in every category here as well. 
And then society stats, that's it with a lot more villagers, pretty cut and dry. Yeah, and at this point, we are going to take a small break from the tournament itself. We're going to let the players, I guess, eat some lunch, and I think we're going to do an age event. Uh, I'll get back to you in just one moment, because here comes the man himself. Oh, yes, of course. Is this uh, 